Mm -hmm. We're going to do the 6th Joliet Pentecost. We're going to do the in Cincinnati. And the Epistle. The Epistle of the 6th Sunday is taken from St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 6. Brethren, all we who are baptized in Christ Jesus are baptized in his death. We are buried together with him by baptism unto death, that as Christ is risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we also may walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the, in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, and that we may serve sin no longer. But for he that is dead is justified from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall all live also together with Christ. Knowing that Christ rising from the dead, again from the dead, dieth now no more, death shall no more have dominion over him. For in that he died to sin. He died once, but as he liveth, he liveth unto God. So do you also reckon yourselves to be, to, to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God, Christ Jesus our Lord. In the Gospel. Take that according to St. Mark, chapter 8. At that time when there was a great multitude of Jesus, and they had nothing to eat, calling his disciples together, he says to them, I have compassion on the multitude, for behold, they have now been with me three days, and have nothing to eat. And if I shall send them away fasting to their home, they shall faint in the way. For some of them came from afar off. And the disciples answered them, From whence can any one fill them with here with bread in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And he said, Seven. And he recommended commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And taking the seven loaves, giving thanks, he broke and broke and gave to his disciples to set before the people. And they had a few little fishes, and he blessed them, <coughs> commanded them <coughs> to be set before them. <coughs> and they did eat and were filled. And they took up, and that was left with fragments, seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about four thousand, and he sent them away. Those are the words of the day, so we got to them. We just leave the generations this morning, taken primarily from St. Ambrose. We read in the sacred scripture today about David, King David. And then David had murdered Bathsheba, and then Bathsheba had sinned with Bathsheba and murdered Urias, the, the, the husband of Bathsheba. And then he was caught, he was found out. <clears throat> and St. Ambrose points out, consider the heart of David, even in his wickedness. So this is the most wicked day of David, when David was extremely proud and also thought he could get away with sin. And he tried to get Darius to not find out that he was, uh, not be able to find out that he was, uh, had, had sinned with Bathsheba, who was a child, but then he wasn't able to do that, so he therefore commanded the death of Urias in battle, so that he would not appear to have been murdered, when in fact he was murdered by David. And then the prophet Nathan came and told him that he, about his murder, and David, <clears throat> David the first had no sorrow of any kind, and he didn't think that he was found out. So St. Ambrose says, well, the very moment you see, the proud David, he, is, he has no thought of his sin until Nathan exposes it to him. And Nathan exposes to David his sin. And he says there was a man that had a bunch of sheep, had, who had only one sheep, and another man had many sheep. The rich man had many sheep. The poor man had only one sheep, and he loved his sheep. But the rich man took the sheep of the poor man and killed it. And rather than taking it of his own sheep, in order he might have a feast for a guest. And, that, that, and when David heard about the cruelty of the rich man, he said, this man should be most severely punished. And then 
Yeah, and Nathan said to David, Thou art that man. You have you have all the kingdom, you have your wives, you have everything, but yet you took the wife of Urias and you you, you stayed with her and then you murdered Urias. And as soon as David was realized the, the, the witness of his sin, instantly he repented. He instantly repented as said Ambrose, notice the greatness of the heart of David, that even when he was in his most wicked moment, once he was discovered his sin, once it was once it was, his sin was spoken, he instantly wept. And he and he, he sang his song Miserere, Psalm 50, of the whole 150 Psalms. It is in the most beautiful of the Psalms. We quote from it every Sunday. <clears throat> we say, Sprinkle with high so that I shall be cleansed. As far as we as open with Dabor, that the Babas may be Babor. So we would say, Sprinkle Lord with high so that I shall be cleansed. Wash me, they should be whiter than snow. And that, <clears throat> that David desired that he be cleansed of his most terrible sins. And therefore, when we walk through the church on Sunday morning, sprinkling the asparagus, the holy water upon the souls, it is, made, it is the, the David who asked that the water be washed, the he be washed with water, with hyssop, and that he be cleansed of his most terrible sin. And he was, had a deep and complete sorrow. So David had a deep and complete sorrow, and he wept for his sin. And then also, <clears throat> says Ambrose, note that David, <clears throat> David is in the, in his, uh, he is the head, he is, in the, he is very wealthy, he is very proud, but as soon as the sin is, is exposed to him, he immediately repents. Whereas the average, the average wealthy man, the average man who is, in any way has submitted the sin of murder or pride like David, they will never repent. But then also notice this concerning the sin of David. He begs for his sin to be forgiven. And his sin is forgiven because he has loved much. But, Though his sin is forgiven, what must happen? Nathan tells David, <clears throat> Because thou hast done this terrible sin, I will rise up evil in thy own house. There shall rise up evil in thy own house. And we must remember that Adam committed a terrible sin, and Adam repented. And though Adam repented of his terrible sin, God said to Adam <clears throat> that there will be, and that he stood, he lost, the, the, the evil rose up in his house. And that there is a, a sin that rose up in the house of Adam, of Adam until the end of the times. And David, <clears throat> David committed a sin, and there rose up evil in his house. I will rise up evil in thy house, and thy own house shall turn against thee in punishment for thy sin. And one day <clears throat> Absalom, his most beloved son, would rise up against him, would drive David into exile, and he would have to flee. And, there, and there, <clears throat> David would have to suffer. Furthermore, soon after the, 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 the baby was born, David would have a great love of the baby that was born of Bathsheba, but the baby would live only eight days, and then the baby would die. And, the, and David prayed for the saving of the baby, while the baby died. And that, and that there was, that we must remember also that there are two parts of sin. But the first part of sin is the sin itself, the evil act that we have committed. And this evil act, when we beg forgiveness for our sins, that is taken away. But even though the, 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 the sin is taken away because of the love of the heart, there is still the debt, there is still the punishment that must be, must be paid for the sin. If one steals a hundred dollars, if one steals a thousand dollars, it must be repaid. And therefore David, when he committed the sin of murdering uh, of the Urias and of the, of the adultery with the Shiva, and then the, the debt had to be paid, and it was paid in the death of his son that was born of Bathsheba. And it was paid in that he had to flee from his own son Absalom. He had to flee from his own son Absalom, and, and then Absalom would then commit adultery with the wives of Urias, just like with the wives of David, just like David committed adultery with the wives of Urias. And remember this. As we travel through life, we experience sorrows, and we experience challenges, and we experience difficulties. And many a sinner says, why did this happen to me? Why do I experience sorrow? Why do I experience difficulties? Why are there trials in my life? Now, trials were sent to us in order to sanctify us. Trials were sent for us in order to strengthen our wills. But it must also be remembered to make us saints. 
Because all Muslims will remember that the reason why there are so many trials in the world, such as all the trials of impurity, all the trials of passion, the sins of passion, all of these trials came because Adam decided to offend God by a grave sin of pride. And these are the consequences of his original sin. And these consequences reach out to the end of time. And there are many consequences of our own sins. And oftentimes we forget about the fact that when we commit sins, we so lightly commit them, and we don't. And then when the consequences come back to us, we don't understand why they did. We forget easily our sins. We don't forget the sins that others commit against us, and we forget easily our own sins. And then everyone says, "Remember that sin does have its consequences, and that one of the reasons why we are allowed to suffer in life." And the experience of sorrows and trials of life is in reparation for our sins. And Nathan did tell David that you, you committed this great sin, you committed another great sin, these great sins of your life, and David repented of the sin in his heart, but he still had to experience the punishment. He still had to experience the, 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 the consequences of the sin in order to complete the purification. And hence, the baby died, and also later on, Later on, his own son Absalom rose up against him, and he had to flee for his life. And then later on, even Absalom himself would die, and they would have to experience the sorrows and the sins of Absalom. And then but David not only was uh, repenting of his sin, but he accepted also the trials of life as a punishment for his sin. And therefore, he said in the Miserere, My sin is always before me. And yet, when it comes to ourselves, we easily forget our sins, and we don't consider any way the punishment. Remember also St. Peter always remembered his sin. He never questioned the forgiveness of God, but he remembered his sin when he denied Christ three times. And the remembrance of sin is important for us in order to keep us from becoming excessively proud. Because each day when we travel through life, we easily turn to that great sin of pride. And therefore, God allows there to be some suffering, some trials from the outside in order to remind us that we have sinned we must make reparation for our sins and also to keep us from the great sin of pride. It was a great sin of pride that made David commit his terrible sins and that, side, that, that pride never returned. And because it never returned, he did not ever repeat those sins. And also with regard to St. Ambrose, note that everyone knows the great sin of David and he was forgiven by God. But they forget that Ambrose, I mean that, that David, who did commit great sin and was forgiven by God, he all he did two things. He accepted the punishment of the sufferings of life in reparation for his sins, and he did not return to his sin. And besides the fact that he wept most bitterly for his sins. And yet the majority of sinners, they could, they said David sinned, so we sinned. But they, but they you know, often they imitate the sin of David, but they don't imitate his repentance, they don't imitate his charity, they don't imitate his acceptance of the trials of life, they only would take him in that he does not continue to repeat his sin, but he leaves it behind forever. And so therefore, it's an imitate David in, in his repentance of sin, in his acceptance of the sufferings of life as a, as a, as a, as a tri tribulation and deserved because of sin, and that he accepted all things so that when he went to death, he was uh, filled with the great love of God inside of him, so much so that it says in the sacred scripture, that the heart of Christ is likened to the heart of David, and so that he to completely transformed his heart 100%. In any case, we close at that. And God bless you all then. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.